In this video, I'll be working through the question you see on the screen here. It's from the 2024 Leave Insert Exam Honours Level Paper 1. If you're looking for a different question from that paper, you should be able to find a playlist in the description below. I'll be doing all this on a whiteboard, hopefully so it's similar to what you're used to your teacher doing. But it's we're not in a classroom, we're on YouTube, so take advantage, pause, rewind, stop, rewatch, all those things you can do on YouTube. If you find this video useful or any of my videos, I would greatly appreciate a like, a subscribe, and what helps most is sharing it with a friend that's doing the Leave Assert or one that's gonna do it next year. Question three starts off with an integration question. It's the integral of cosine six x with respect to x. And uh, this is a very simple question if you know how to do it. Um, like, a lot of students will be able to do this in five seconds. Uh, two seconds, just one line. Do it in their head. Now I'm gonna assume you don't know how to do that because if you do, you'd skip this. So I'm gonna do it a little slower, but I do want to point out you can get good at this question and just do it very quickly in your head. So let me do it this slow way and then at the end, I might give a pointer or two of how to get a shortcut. But uh, actually, I think the best way to find shortcuts is to do it the hard way over and over and over and then you'll notice shortcuts yourself. Because otherwise, you won't remember how I tell you to do it, but you will, if you find a shortcut yourself, you'll never forget it. Anyway, what's the long way to do it? Um, so your, your tables book tells you how to, how to do integration with uh, trigonometry, but it doesn't say anything about something multiplying in here. So does that change it? It does, yes. So um, you cannot just integrate this. We're gonna have to, we're gonna have to substitute something. So instead of the integral of cosine six x, what we, what we do know how to do is the integral of just some letter. So let's just make up u. u is the letter we usually make up, dx. So instead of six x, I wrote u. u is the same as six x. I'm gonna substitute that. We still can't do this though. Cosine of u with respect to x, that doesn't work. We can only differentiate, uh, integrate cosine u with respect to u. So we need to change the x. How do we do that? Um, we find it over here. We differentiate both sides. The derivative of u is the u dx. The derivative of 6x with respect to x is just 6. Okay, now a u, du appears. We want the du here. Um, rearrange this and we just get dx. So I'm just multiplying both sides by dx, dividing by 6, and then I guess switching sides, is equal to du divided by six. I, I just moved that up here, this down here, and then I've wrote them the different way. So instead of dx, if I put this in over here, what happens? The integral of cosine u du over, over six. Let me put in over six here. Except uh, divided by six is a, six is a constant. Um, if we divide by a constant, we don't have to leave it here. We can move it anywhere we want. We can get it out of the way and put it over here, one divided by six. This is just the most simple integration. It's written in your book. The integral of cosine a letter with respect to that letter is just equal to, and remember 106, forget 106 over six for a moment. This, the book will just tell you, this is equal to sine you. When I say the book, I mean your tables book. So that's it, we're finished, except we shouldn't have a U. I made up U. U is, is a made up concept, so let's just change it. Uh, this is equal one over six sine, what's U equal? Six X. That's the answer. There to there is the answer. That's full marks. Um, the only thing is some students just write this straight away. They do this in their head. Um, yeah, I guess I'll give you a tip or two, but what I would say is just do this 50 times and by the time you get to the seventh or eighth time, you'll just be writing the answer. You'll, be, you'll find your own shortcut. And the shortcut in this case is just whatever number's here, we divide by it. And then uh, we change cosine to a sine. Or if this was a sine, we change it to a minus cosine. Um, uh, to think a bit more complex about it, we're actually dividing by the derivative of this. And that, that comes important in a bit harder questions. Um, if you think a little harder about it, uh, we're doing something involving the chain rule. 
this is actually the the chain rule coming into it here and the divide is just because because we're integrating and i'll let you play around with that part anyway that's the long way to do it find your own shortcut there is a shortcut lots of students would have just wrote the answer and got full marks okay in part b they give us a function fx here and they ask us to find the equation of the tangent to that graph at uh, at the point x equals two um you can just jump into this question i do that all the time it's probably not the best idea but if you're jumping into this uh, you should see equation of a line and um, what do you need for equation of a line you need a point and a slope you start thinking slope then you should be thinking derivative and that's a that, that'll be the right path to take here uh, but let me let me step back a bit let's look at the question again they give you this equation let's draw this now i'm not going to draw it correctly or accurately i'm just going to say cubic function with a positive it looks something like like that that's that's as far as i'm going to go um it, it might not look like that but it looks something along those lines um and they tell us there's a point x i x equals two i don't know where that is uh, i won't guess for the moment because uh, there is a yeah there is a clue and layer in the question you know what, i'll guess and i'll happen to guess correct but it's it looks like it's around there um oh no it's in this question actually the clue i'll get now that i think about i'm going to find out the slope is minus seven and it, it can't be minus anywhere but between here anyway it looks something like this i don't know where x equals two is yet but it looks something like this there is a point wherever it is maybe it's here it is here but maybe it's somewhere else and they have an equation of a they have a tangent to it tangent like this and uh, they want to find the equation of this line that's that's what the question is really asking us uh, and we do we do know this point is x equals two so how do we go about that uh let's see let's find the slope let's find the slope of this line first if you see if you see slope you should think derivative so let's find the derivative the derivative of this guy is uh, 3 multiplied by 2 is 6, uh, 3 minus 1 is 2, uh, 2 multiplied by minus 9 is minus 18, 2 minus 1 is 1, um, 1 multiplied by 5 is 5, x to the power of 1 minus 1, x to the power of 0 is 1, and we're left with 5. Uh, minus 11 disappears because uh, it's x to the power of 0 multiplied, I, x to the power of 0 is here, 0 multiplied by anything is 0. It's gone. Okay, we get the, the derivative, the equation, the, a function of the derivative of this function. But we know x equals two at this point. So if we wanna know the slope at this point, we want to know the derivative at, the derivative at two. That's what we wanna know here. So we just put this in, uh, put two in, we get uh, six times four is 24, uh, two times minus 18 is minus 36 plus five and all of that equals uh, minus seven and sorry this is where i cheated i i'd already got minus seven well I've, I've got the whole answer in my notes but uh once i got minus seven i i the slope here this is a positive 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 zero zero positive positive but the only place a minus seven could be is somewhere in here so that's how i know it's roughly there um okay so we get the slope uh, we need the equation of this line. What else do we need? We need a slope and a point. We need this point here. We know it's two, but what's y? Well, fx is y. Y and fx are the same thing pretty much. Uh, slight differences, but pretty much the same thing. So what's y? Y is equal to f2. Just put two into this one up here. That's uh, two times eight is 16 minus um, 36. Uh, two twos are four, four nines. Uh, two fives are 10 minus 11. Put all this in a calculator, double check everything. Uh, let's see, minus 21, my notes say. Hopefully, hopefully that's correct. So this point here is minus 21. Okay, now we're just getting the equation of a line. There's a formula for the equation of a line, uh, y minus, see, let me write here, y minus y1 equals um, m times x minus x1. This is, this is the most common way to get the equation of a line, in Ireland at least. Uh, the way I do it, look, I'm sure you guys know how to do this, so I'll show you a slightly different way. Uh, 
It's not that uncommon. A lot of people still in Ireland do it this way. Uh, equation of a line looks like this. Y is equal to mx plus c. We just don't know what m and c is. But we do know m now. Uh, m is minus 7. That's right here. m is equal to minus 7. Just don't know c. But the thing is, I know ax and x is, one of the x's is 2. And the corresponding y is minus 21. So I can fit everything in here. Minus 21, minus 7 for the m, 2 for the x. So I can solve for c. I can just solve all this. This is a minus 14, plus 14. We get c is equal to minus 7. So I can write this again here. y is equal, I know m, m is minus 7. I know c, it's minus 7. That's the equation of a line. I find this much quicker than doing it this way, so forgive me there. So that's the equation of this line. That's the answer to B part one. Oh, they, uh, they have a part two. Um, uh, find the X coordinate of the point of inflection of F. So what's the point of inflection? The point of inflection is when the slope changes from um, increasing to decreasing or, or the opposite. So for example here, the slope is uh, very big here and it's getting smaller, it's decreasing. It's, de it's getting smaller, it's getting smaller. It's minus like one, minus a half, zero. It's still getting smaller. And it's zero, it's, um, sorry, this is plus here. So it's like nine, it's seven, it's four, it's two, it's a half, it's zero. It's uh, minus a half, it's minus one, it's minus two, it's minus seven somewhere. Um, but at some point, it stops, it stops getting smaller, it starts getting bigger, like maybe it gets to minus 10 somewhere, minus 10 and then it's minus 9, it's minus 7, it's, it's uh, minus a half, it's 0, it's 1, 2, it's a million. This point, there's a point somewhere in the middle, I've messed up here by having a roughly the same point, um, but there's a point uh, somewhere in the middle of these two, not necessarily in the middle, but somewhere between these two, that um, that inflection point happens. Anyway, we don't need the drawing for it. Uh, how we find it is the second derivative. When the second the second derivative tells us how much something is increasing or decreasing. Um, so when that's zero, it's at the point of inflection. So if I carry on these two lines here and get the second derivative of x, two times six is twelve x and this becomes minus 18. There's the second derivative. When this equals zero, that's the inflection point. I guess that's all you really need to know. The second derivative equals zero at the inflection point. So when this equals zero, we get a 12x, um, 12x equals 18. Uh, so if this equals zero, 18 comes over. That uh, x is equal three over two. That's, um, they want uh, they want a coordinate, so they, they want, uh, let's say it's, it's yeah, this is two, so this point here is, let's put it up here, three over two, one and a half. So what's the y? Just need to put that in over here, uh, I don't have much room, let's squeeze it down here. F, 1.5, or three over two. So I'm putting this into the first function. Put it in here, put it on a calculator, 3 over 2 to the power of 3 times 2, uh, minus 9 times uh, 3 over 2 squared, and, and so on. Put all that in a calculator, and uh, let's see, I get minus 17. Hopefully, hopefully you get the same. All I did is I put uh, 1.5 into all of these x's. Okay, I hope that answers, uh, oh, we still have part C to do, so that's, that's B. Let me clear this off and we'll do part C. Okay, on to part C. They give us a, a drawing that I hopefully I've copied uh, roughly uh, correctly because it's all about the drawing in this question. There's not really much maths to do. Uh, you're gonna need probably a, some, a ruler and we're just making a guess and answer. We're gonna show the examiner what we're thinking though. And um, they give us uh, some information we have to understand. They tell us, uh, first of all, the line here. Hopefully you can see it. My, oh, it's a bit wobbly. It's meant to be a straight line here. Uh, my marker is running out a bit, so I can't really fix it. And this straight line here, they call that L, LX. And this um, curved line, this is PX, or probably for polynomial. Uh, for that one, and L for line, and this one. 
And they t give us a very important bit of information. They tell us the derivative of P is equal to the derivative of L. And um, then they also, uh, they, they ask us to find the two values when this is correct. So they say this equals this, there's only two points between zero and 10. Uh, yeah, they say between zero and 10, X is bigger than zero, X is less than 10, that that's correct. What are those two points? Estimate them as accurately as you can using the drawing. So derivative, you should be thinking slope. Now the slope of a line is easy, visually especially. The slope of a line is the line. Um, the, the slope of the line is the line at all points. It's just a straight line. The slope of the curve is here, is here. I, I, I don't have a large ruler, I'm afraid. Um, a quick edit later, I did find a stick uh, that'll work as a ruler for us. Um, so yeah, a line, it should have been a straight line. A line has the slope the same all along it. Whereas this curve, this is much different. The slope of this curve here, it's like looks like that at this point. The slope at this point looks like that. Like uh, it changes. The slope here looks like that. Changes all along it. What this is asking us is when is the slope of P the same as the slope of L? And at two points, like so, from here and here. Let's have a look. The slope here looks like that. And right above it, let's say at six. At six, right above six. That's not uh, the slope. That's not the slope of the tangent of this. So when is the two the same? So hopefully you can see that when it's the same. Just put your ruler on the line and bring it down to the curve. When is the when it when does it become a tangent? So I would say on my one it becomes a tangent. Let me try that again. Somewhere around here. But you should be uh, doing it on your own drawing because my drawing is not accurate. Um, and then you're basically I'm reading off what this number is here. So you need to show the examiner that by drawing a some sort of tangent here. Um, have it maybe just put a couple of lines like this to show them it's um, it's parallel to that guy, and then show them a dotted line going up and read off this number. That's your correct number. Now I did this by looking at the graph on the um, on the exam paper. So it's a bit like my one looks like two point eight, but the one I got from looking at the graph. Uh, I got 2.2 as an answer here. But it doesn't really matter what the answer you get is, once you do it correctly, it's a very large margin of error on this one. And the same here, I get the curve, I go up here, I find a point and I come down and read it off. Oh, uh, my one, the one I got by looking at the correct, uh, the correct drawing, I got 6.5 here. Again, it doesn't look too good on my one. So just show them that you are looking at a tangent here, you're marking it down. And that's it, that's the answer to part C. It's not much maths involved, it's not much work involved, it's just knowledge. You need to know when you see this, that's what it means. That's what they're really testing there. Okay, that's all for question three. If you have any follow-up questions about any of the parts, if I made any mistakes, which is very likely because I'm not working from a marking scheme, uh, let me know in the comments below. I'll do my best to get back to you. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.